So am I audible? Yes, audible and visible. All right, cool. Thank you. Uh, I'll be starting my speech. Oh yes, pure ice verbally. I'll take one between five and six. Please don't direct me. I'll be starting in three, two, one. On the side of proposition, whether we win or lose this debate, we have accepted the fact that it's down to fate. Two things I want to do today. First, I'll tell you what exactly determinism is likely to look like under the prop paradigm and what examples of determinism are, will be based off uh, of existing social constructs. And second, I'll tell you two main arguments on how 1A, we absorb guilt from people and make them feel as if things that happen are not their fault. And B, we inspire people to fight on despite the fact that life is unfair and poses challenging odds at them. What then is determinism? A, determinism is simply the belief that everything that happens is already determined or that you leave it down to fate or that if something does not happen, it wasn't meant to be. How does this then affect people then? Right, four layers here. First, people don't know what the determined outcome is. This is important because no matter what happens, it will never be hopeless because people can continue to believe that the predetermined event afterwards is then going to be a positive outcome for them. For example, right, if a student fails their exams repeatedly, the student is not going to believe they are doomed to always fail because there is still a possibility that the determined outcome in the future is that they are going to work hard and succeed. B, this necessarily means things like self-doubt are less likely to exist on side of prop because they believe in the fact that there is a predetermined event that will be positive in the future. C, note then, people are better able to understand and accept cause and effect that are obvious. For example, if you throw a raw egg at a wall, it's going to break and cause a mess. If you commit a crime, law enforcement is going to come after you and arrest you. This is human logic and is not going to be overridden by any sort of narrative that is illogical. Right, D, determinism as a narrative comes into play into two situations. One, when the individual is unsure of an outcome. For example, you are not sure if I will pass or fail my driving test next week, but I can then believe that I've done all the preparation I can. At this point, it's out of my control. It's up to fate. Second, when a difficult situation has arisen or when someone is facing a challenge, right? Like when businesses are forced to close shop when COVID-19 first hit, first hit, this is seen as an event that was meant to happen and not, and the failure of the business then is not blamed by the businessmen on themselves. Second thing about determinism here, uh, notice that determinism already exists in status quo. It is one of the most popular and influential narratives that inspire popular world religions. However, note that this doesn't mean that the, co the counterfactual that ought needs to defend is a world where people are inherently determinist because while people are religious, people don't buy completely or 100% into the religion that they believe in all of the time. And there are people who are affected by extraneous factors that cause them to not cause them to believe less in determinism. This is just an example of what determinism is likely to look like under prop. We give you two examples. Firstly, Abrahamic religions. God knows everything that has and will happen. And this is said in all three Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. This infers that everything is predetermined at the present moment and God has pre science and knows everything that's going to happen. Therefore, it is determined. B, the primordial universal concept of luck and fate, this concept does not belong to any religion, but it's already present in many religions. Some religions have gods of luck that you pray to for better luck. Some religions have, uh, some religions believe in the fact that everything is uh, predetermined with the lack of a god. Regardless, this means that a large portion of people on the world, on prop, are going to subscribe to this idea of pre-science uh, of, pre or pre -de of determinism. Why is this important? Three reasons. First, when people buy into these religions, they're likely to believe that their deity or their God is benevolent. This God that they worship has predetermined that they are able to overcome the challenges in life and are likely to succeed. B, this necessarily means that this narrative is not going to be one that scares people away or makes people lose hope, right? Because these people believe that their actions can result in better outcomes because their God or their faith has set it for them. The, right, finally, uh, before I get to arguments, I'll take a POI. Okay, no POI. 
The first argument is that it's not your fault. For example, when people are victims of sexual assault, society on prop can't just tell them that, oh, it's your fault because you were wearing exposing or seductive clothing. This is not their fault. Three layers of analysis. First, it's how it's easier for people to recover from the sadness or tragedies. This looks like things like death of a loved one like in an accident or in a kidnapping. Oftentimes in status quo, these tragedies result in, result in long lasting emotional impact that can inhibit a person from functioning, causing them to spiral down a depressive episode or causing them to develop further mental health problems if they are unable to deal with it. With the existence of this narrative, the, co the comparative on top is that people will then think that this is predetermined, there's nothing they could have done to stop it. This necessarily means there's no reason for people to hold on to incident, to spiral down depressive episodes, and there's even more reason to move on and carry on with life that is determined to be good. B, there's no sense of guilt or self-blame when something goes wrong. People in status quo often tend to think that bad things that happen are caused by themselves. They place unwarranted guilt on themselves and amplify their own thoughts in their own mind. For example, right, when I lose a debate, I always think that I have let my team down and I have made a mistake in my speech. This is not necessarily true, but because I'm inherently negative and so are people, we blame ourselves. In reality, there are a lot more factors than only that that contribute to an accident or tragedy or failure. It's very unfair to blame yourself which is the thing that happens on opposition and results in a lot more negative harms of negative emotional and mental harms the comparative then is because we think we understand that our people believe that that outcome of losing or failure is predetermined they will know it is not their fault but for future outcomes they will need to try harder C. It is then much easier to recover from something that is traumatic and painful when you don't have to live with a lifetime of guilt, right? First thing, this is a benefit because even if someone really is guilty of contributing to a tragedy or a failure, to live with guilt is a net harm no matter how deserved. Two reasons. First, humans tend to make wrong decisions in the heat of the moment when they are not sound of mind. For example, when someone discovered their husband cheated on them, they might decide to murder their husband while in shock and kill them. Second, people who do suffer from guilt are often people who don't fully understand their consequences. Decisions that lead to tragedies are often uninformed and people shouldn't be held accountable for these actions. It's unjustified for them to, punish with, to be punished with guilt that ruins their entire, the rest of their life and inhibits their autonomy to function as a human being. For these reasons proposed. All right, thank you, Prime Minister. I now invite the Leader of Opposition. Am I audible? Yes, you are. All right, give me a second, I'm sorry, to define where my notes start. Okay, all righty. So all that said and done, uh, pronouns you heard, POIC voice, I'll take you by the fifth minute, fifth minute and only. Um, give me a second again, sorry. All righty, there. So starting my speech in three, two, one, we live in a society that runs on multiple implications. Our society runs on this idea that you can fix your current situation. Our society right now is built in a way where your future is in your hands, essentially. There's success, there's regret, there's what is, because our society works in a way where we paint the future as something very open. And I think this is important to note, the world we live in today, determinism is not the dominant narrative. And that is something we are going to take advantage of on opposition side. There are a couple of rebuttals I wanna go through. First, essentially what they told you is determinism is great because uh, the implication is people don't know what the determined situation will be. That's why they will always have hope. It will give people peace. It will help people. It will continue to inspire people. The thing is, government makes this assumption that determinism will always be viewed in a positive view. They are taking the stance that essentially it's where they're trying to show the panel how this narrative is good because you give happiness and hope to people. I think that even if we want to take this definition, it lacks the clarification implication to build up this case. They don't tell you explicitly why is it that the people will always think it's going to be viewed in a positive light. It's untrue that people are automatically going to view this as a positive situation. For example, when you are in a situation yeah. where your family died, I said fifth minute, <laughs> uh, where your situation where your family died, that is a situation where 
it doesn't give you hope. You're in, in a specific situation where you realize your mother was going to die regardless. How is that showcasing you a positive outcome? And even if, if we take on their best case for this uh, mindset of positive outcomes, realize that you fail to tackle many implications that come up with this narrative that ends up mitigating any benefits you have. Now, if you talk about people don't 100% uh, believe in religion, God knows what happens, and this, this narrative gives them hope. Your benefits are illogical because in the society, you have hope in something when something is inherently benevolent. This is also made different because the narrative right now is not determinism so we don't this narrative of determinism is not inherently benevolent in terms uh, of the same ways that religions are, are viewed you also talked about oh sexual assault determinism will put the blame on the abuser not the victim this doesn't even happen in your world that's just when people are stupid this is illogical because if competent humans see there's an abuser and a victim they will not blame the victim for something that the abuser tried to do it would be a lot it would be logical for these humans to assume that the abuser was determined to be bad and yes the victim will be hurt but it wouldn't it mean they won't blame her because it, it literally wasn't in her control the best your world has to offer is no one will be blamed in our world we will punish them because the abuser had the free will to assault the woman so this is something i want to talk about right now what is the implication of a narrative a narrative is something that people hold to be true. A narrative is not just a story, like the dictionary said. In the context of the debate, it is something that a society is built upon. What this entails is society will be fully enamored by what this means. We see, for example, narratives on importance of familial love, girls support girls, the two dominant narratives in our society. Society then takes these narratives and they are either taught explicitly or indirectly. This looks like, for example, mothers telling their daughters that the girls support girls or girls quietly giving other girls pads during their menstruation. These things then perpetrate the message of the narrative narrative, allowing it to reach different audiences and areas. And this uh, and this causes the narrative to be accepted or is more relevant to society. So this directly impacts how society views truth or how they view different actions. And we're going to prove that is on your side of the house, this perpetration of this specific narrative is detrimental to the functioning of society, of society both principally and pragmatically. So we can understand that the narrative of detriment of determinism is not to push that people are lazy. However, we tell you that realistically, this is how they will act in response to this being a dominant narrative. The problem with this narrative and the motion is this is in a world where no one knows the faith they are resigned to. If they somehow do, then did, then yes would be fine with it because it would mean that people would still know work, that they have to work towards something. However, because it is completely unknown, you were up to a fairly floaty case of thinking whatever happens is predetermined, but at, at the end of the day, you also don't know if it will happen in the first place. Let us look at what this specific narrative implies. It implies that first, things are fully pre-coded into each person. And what's the implication of this uh, mindset? It brings me to my second implication is that no matter what steps you take, no matter how much you hope for a different outcome, it will reach the same situation anyway. Third, it implies that you don't have a choice. Why? Because no matter what you choose to do, you will end up in a predetermined situation anyway. Your sure. steps are plotted out for you. Sure, make it fast. The outcome that is likely that people believe in on our side is one of positivity because of my one minute of analysis that people believe that God wants good outcomes for okay, them. Okay, okay, okay. You're then basing everything on this idea people will view it benevolently. That is an assumption that you cannot take. Not everybody views and uh, has the same benevolent view. The difference between religion and determinism is religion is focused on a deity. Determinism is just a concept where things are plotted out for you. There is no benevolent being in your world of determinism. And the thing is, of all the three implications I told you, it's subtle, yes, but as it grows more dominant, it takes root in our society. And this brings me to my first argument of why it psychologically impacts humanity in the wrong way. Number one, idea of no free will. We have to understand that humans are inherently selfish in the way that they always want what is best for themselves and themselves only. They work for ideals such as belonging, love, and comfort, even when they work for others because they personally love that person and love makes them want to do things for them, which benefits themselves. More importantly, humans are built on this idea of free will. We are built on the idea of choice. The point of at which once free will is taken away is when we consider their humanity to be robbed because it is against the concept of having a free will that keeps us human. So what does this narrative do? It tells us that, us that no matter what we do, our course of history is plotted for us. Remember, this motion is about a narrative, not necessarily whether this is true or bad, but because it is a narrative, given the analysis I've showed you previously, this is perpetrated in society. People, to some degree, believe this to be true. This is bad because you are now in a state where humanity is painted as a robot, at least on our side of the house, we are defending status quo. We have a world where the future is still painted in an open view. You still have that choice of how am I going to shape my future because you don't have that narrative that everything is plotted for us. Number two, no hope for better future bitterness. When you are, for example, in the world today, when you are punished by your parents, you are sad about it. You are bitter. You don't have hope. This is going to happen even in a world we have right now that 
things are not predetermined because you are almost 100% sure that this will happen. What more in your world where this narrative is fully encompassed? This is bad because you take away that element of hope people have. Unlike our world, because the future is wide open, they have that hope of hoping for something far beyond what they can see right now versus in a situation where they realize no matter what they do, something is going to end up something is going to happen and they can't take control of it. Number three, no initiative. Realize that when people need some, some, people need some sort of motive to get them to do something. Humanity is just built that way. So that means people run the extra mile in acting upon an issue. Example, a drive that makes them want to wake up in the morning. However, the problem is that because people don't know this in your world, they just assume that whatever they are going to get in life, that's the furthest they can get. Because according to the determinism, whether they do or they don't, it will happen. So why bother? A world without determinism means more innovation as world people would have an incentive to create because there's no predetermined fate for anything. In our world, there are hard workers, people who will work towards the goal because they believe it can get better. We showed you this narrative is inher inherently harmful by impacting psychological factors. We showed you how it neg negatively affects society. And we showed you how you have all of these better benefits on our side of the house, as well as effect that one more argument that will be brought up by my uh, second speaker for all those reasons, very proud to oppose. Thank you, Leader of Opposition. I now invite Deputy Prime Minister. Hi, yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, I'm going to start my speech. Sorry, I'm going to start my speech in three, two, and one. If this debate was about the benefits of determinism existing, then there would be no debate because that'd be up to fate. But because it's about a narrative and how people perceive and how it and how it's manifest, it is something that proposition can push for. Opposition fails to understand one key factor, the one where is how humans would interpret this narrative in the first place. So I'm going to re-clarify what Edmund has told you and really push this debate and bring some clarity to it. So how are people going to interpret a narrative of determinism, right? Number one, Everyone is obviously going to be able to understand to a certain extent things can be controlled. A very simple cause and effect. If you throw glass on the floor, it will break. If you cheat on your girlfriend, if she finds out she's going to break up with you, things like that are not stuff that is going to be, it's not going to be something that people are saying, oh, it's going to be up to fate. It is something they know that will happen because it's something that lies within human logic itself and cannot be overridden by any certain narrative. Number two, so how will this narrative actually play out then? This means when you leave it, when you're about to enter a situation where you are unsure of an outcome, no matter what the outcome hap is, the person who is entering the situation is going to understand that it is up to fate. Some things are, are out of people's control. People, that is how people are going to determine and people. this is how people are going to like, uh, this is how people are going to interpret this narrative. So how does this manifest? This means when something goes wrong, if Edmund, for, if for example, we lose this debate, we're going to say, okay, that was up to fate. Maybe because we're just bad at philosophy, that was something that we could not control. Instead, the comparative then is on opposition. They're going to have to, un they're going to have to have a team like a bunch of people who believe it is our fault because we did not study enough because we did not work hard enough and that is something that is like an inherent harm because guilt is not something you should live for especially when there are so many other factors that come to play so a few responses right proposition tells you largely four things number one they tell you determinism is not a dominant narrative nor that it's one that's viewed positively number two that there's an implication that no one will be blamed therefore there is no sort of incarceration and the criminal justice system would just collapse and lastly sorry three lastly it is there imply it is there's an implication that there is no choice since the outcome was going to be the same. A few responses. To the first, when they tell you determinism is not a dominant narrative, nor it is one that is viewed positively. Two responses, right? The first one, how it's not a dominant narrative. We can concede to a certain extent it's not a dominant narrative. We don't see why this is a relevant issue in the first place. And even if we were to like try and respond to this, I tell you here then, that when determinism becomes a dominant narrative, when people are in need of hope, which is going to be like expanded later on in my second argument. Number two, on how it is something that is actually viewed positively, right? We tell you then, when something is left up to your own control, something, for example, uh, passing a test left to your own abilities, a human is likely to like interpret these like possibilities negatively because they don't have enough confidence in themselves. However, when it comes to fate, when it comes to a gamble, people tend to have an optimism bias in which they think, okay, if I try, at least if I, I'll just try, something good is likely going to happen. It looks like when somebody gambles at like a, it looks like when somebody goes to like gunting, right? And they want to gamble and they're going to put all their money in it, even though they have absolutely no idea what's going to happen, just because they believe that the outcome is likely to be good 
then it's to be bad. That is why determinism would be viewed positively in the first place. Secondly, then, on how they talk about the, there's an implication that no one would be blamed, therefore the criminal justice system would collapse. We tell you then the criminal justice system does not punish people for something that's just does not just hold people accountable, they punish people for the action. It does not matter then if it was not your fault, it was not like an intent of the person in the first place. At the very moment they commit the crime, they commit a crime and that crime has to be punished. It doesn't matter what narrative is run at the same time, like, uh, it just doesn't matter what narrative is run at present. At the, as long as they commit a certain crime, they will have to be punished. We don't see why this point is relevant in this debate. Thirdly then, when they talk about how there's an implication, there would be no choice since every outcome is the same. First of all, they don't tell you why this is such a bad thing, right? We don't understand understand why this would be a bad thing because it shows that in like if every outcome is going to be the same it shows that people are likely to shows that people are less likely to be negative people are less likely to want to hope for more and even though the outcome is going to just be the same they're going to hope the outcome is positive secondly then we tell you even if it gives the illusion there is no choice people are still consciously making choices in every situation of their life then because they believe in a determined if because they believe in determinism they're more likely to want to put in effort because they believe that it's going to be good so you're going to put in effort so that it won't go too vain right last okay then our like before i move on any pois is it not an issue to actually believe you have a choice? I don't see why this is relevant in the debate. I don't think the principle of believing that you have a choice is a really big contention in this debate. What really matters is how people are going to perceive this narrative and how they're going to use it in their lives, right? For example, if Martin Luther King, Ju Martin Luther King Jr. was like, didn't have any kind of hope or didn't believe in fate at all what he would be doing if someone went up to him and asked him do you think you're going to be able to like end racism as a single person the answer would be no but why was he able to make a change because he had some kind of faith therefore he decided to put in the effort anyway even though he had an opponent even though he had an opponent that was a big as, as big as one that is systemic oppression right two then on like leading to my second substantive then two on how there's it gives hope for people in dark times which is also where we directly contend with opposition on two layers right the first on how optimize, like the optimism bias exists when something is out of con your control. I've already explained to this in a rebuttal, so we're going to tell you how this manifests. Because even if things look bleak now because of some like sad things or, or like very high obstacles and walls to, like, walls to climb, I am predetermined by fate to be able to achieve in like success in life because fate as a whole is probably likely to love me. Or for example, if you subscribe into a religious version of determinism, God loves all humans and wants them to live their best life. This means then people are more likely to be hopeful even though the situation looks so bleak that not even their own actions are able to influence the fate they're going to live. This means regardless of whether someone is capable, people are more likely to look past the negativity they project into themselves, climb out of self-guilt and depression, and actually strive for success on proposition. They're more likely to be able to achieve success then because they have more hope, and when you have more hope, you are more likely to try. And when you have the hope to try, you're going to try hard enough in spite of every single issue, right? For example, this looks like in spite of, in spite of like overcoming the patriarchy being almost impossible, women in conservative religious countries are still going to try because they believe in a fate in which their efforts are going to lead to a better outcome no matter how hard it seems now the comparative then is where people think they're incapable of, of of like in the face of overwhelming odds and decide to give up because there is no sort of narrative of hope that comes with an optimized optimism bias with determinism this means then there is no hope for change and when there is no hope for change there'll be no effort for change so what if you fail or suffer multiple setbacks throughout your life and start to think that you're fated to fail we tell you then the situation only exists on opposition because they will think that this is up to them up to their own personal capability and they're just incapable of succeeding in the first in the first place. We tell you then on com like proposition, the comparative is there is a determined like in with determinism. You may believe in a fate that you might fail now, but at the very end, the outcome is going to be the same. You're going to pass or you're going to succeed. Notice that we say people don't know what is predetermined. Therefore, people will still hold on to hope because fate is not consistent. Because we believe in a world where people are going to actually have hope to have changes in their lives, and because we believe in a world where we don't blame people for actions that were just completely out of their control. Please propose thank you all right thank you deputy prime minister i now invite deputy leader of opposition hello am i audible yes you are okay great so just to preface my speech pronouns are she her poi through voice i will not be checking chat I want to quickly say hi to compost heap okay so 
starting my speech in three, two, one, go. The question in this debate at this point is if government's one benefit of not having guilt will have something bad if all these things will happen. We'll triumph all our issues that we brought up to you and had zero engagement with. I want to quickly call out government for the lack of engagement without any response to our counter proposition of, of free will and all these things. But oh, well, it's their loss. So I want to go on to a couple of rebuttals firstly. Firstly, they talk about how if this debate is about the effect of determinism, I think that it is because we are telling you how this narrative of determinism is going to be seen as manifested in this world. And this motion asks us if you want to tell them if we prefer this kind of world with it or without. And we've already showed you how this will actually be affecting humanity all in all and not the debate from the ideas of determinism. We tell you that that like we never did or we never told you that like it's underrating these human intelligences. We are only the ones who tell you that the characterizations of humans are not going to, it's not going to like make you that specific definition. You aren't necessarily going to be thinking of the worst case of people. Aside from that, I talk about how it's going to be our fault and having that guilt. I think that even though that is something that's going to happen, I think it's going to still push people to improve. And that is what you get with free will. You're able to show people that, okay, even though you have the lack, like even though you did something bad, you have the ability of redemption. I'll talk about that later. I think that what you actually do get on their side of the house is the need, is the need to find an excuse and just make, make people like feel guilty. I think that's what you mostly get on government side. Aside from that, they talk about how they're going to be implying the entire like criminal justice system and how like it's going to be broken and no one will be blamed. I think we'll talk more on this later, but realize that the criminal justice system is over Overall, talking about this sort of redemption, right? You're going to put people into prison and going to make them into prisoners. But then after that, they have that form of redemption. I think that you get that much better on our side. Lastly, to talk about how like they have this idea of like as long as we try, that's it. I think we already let like we like we don't already debunk this. Remember that we are we are already telling you that overall the idea that people will try anyways. But seriously, how is that like, going to actually be realistic in our world? Because in our world, sometimes the best is not actually as much as you can get. I think overall, what you get on our side is, is the ability to actually see what you are worth. For, I think you get a lot much more in free will. We did not tell you that the idea is going to be hard, is like the harm to be brought up. We did really told you that the lack of humanity is going to happen a lot much worse on your side. You talk about how why they don't like see the believing in people as like a choice and like relevant to this debate. But isn't the whole debate about this of like how we want to perceive the world? I think what you, you do is you tell us that humans will react to this narrative of not having free will because of that you did not, and we already told you that that you're just going to be shooing this issue that's because of one that you can't build anymore at web. Lastly, talk about how people will not have the outcome that they actually want or like hope for we already told you and framed in our status quo right now that the world wherein people are still having like this belief can change in the in their own future when they want to i think that what you get to this regardless that is what happens in the future is what you'll try to have a specific outcome and that is what you get on our side since people can actually try to have that instead of just believing that, oh i am forced to have this faith at, like in the in the very beginning so let me put it plain and simple let's tell like let's say that you don't even know that you're going to win or not even if you believe that people will try anyways because of that you do like it's not having like essentially having your hope but the thing is is that you have a world where the narrative is so like quote unquote no matter what you do they will have this one specific outcome and you cannot just avoid the inevitable so no matter how hard or not they try the path of victory or like defeat is already for you and that is and so why would you actually try in your world i don't see how this how there's an actual incentive on government's world so, we, so let me go on to like re-impacting of like no like first of all you will not be having like some sort of initiative and you will not have some sort of hope for the future because determinism is not a religion i think that what is Line is, is going to be benevolent because being you see that's that like you're going to see the religion as that you fail to prove why people will be viewing this as a benevolent situation. So going on to my extension on the Maslow's hierarchy. Okay, I don't want to say that my POI preference is voice, but go ahead. Quick. People will still want to try because they know and understand the logic of the cause and effect. They're like, please engage with that. Okay, even if people do know like the cause and effect of like their own actions, I think you still get a lot much better in our world with free with the like, having free will. Why? Because if they if they do something, realize we give them some sort of redemption. I think that's what you don't get on your side of the house because then you are damned and like damned to hell if you do something bad. Okay, going back, I'll talk about I'll talk more about that later. Going on to Maslow's hierarchy. Now it's one of the most trusted models in society. I think that's the entire triangle as a whole. So we are willing to concede that man is obviously not as stupid enough to die because they're waiting for a psychological need. So, but we tell you that they would not try as much even if they were to concede on your side why because i think that's going to be hard for them to be safe and stable aside from that's going to be hard for them to find love and being right it's going to be hard for them to find like a way to want to live aside from that and, and it's going to like see the entire tears of this debate but i'm, but I'm not going to go on to that overall it's going to affect this determinism that's going to happen on your side why because you also realize that the entire Meyer, like maslow's hierarchy pyramid is dependent on a person's self-identity we tell you that the person's identity is somehow dulled down because of the idea that they aren't capable to choose their own life 
life and they aren't able to do what they want and themselves for their own interests and their own dreams because you are forcing them to this one like out outcome that's going to happen with, with and whatever they do again how will they know what the, like what like life has for them if they're just going to be destined to whatever fate that they have because we assume that they're going to be competent beings and we tell you that they're more likely to choose the safest route to make sure that they are not doing something that's risky to their fate or above them or like above or below them so the problem is that these people will not truly be satisfied as man because they'll always be searching for something that they will that they won't even be able to take or like have in the idea of, of in the idea of determinism because actually you're going to be having this uncertainty of like people to have so what does affect like the masses i think that like firstly you know most importantly like it is esteem and the self and like self-actualization is that the individual will have to rely on how they feel in the future because of like whether they want to work hard or not and something that will not happen is like the like, esteem is essentially broken in your world you're not going like you're not going to get like the like in, in your world you're going you're not going to have like the faith that they're expecting and they'll no longer have the hope for the future and i think that's very important for humans to have so they'll be beating themselves down because they know that they could have done better but overall they're not going to have the chance to have that thing so to your poi realize that the nuance of the situation is that no matter the situation your outcome is already paved through paved for you and what this means is that no matter how much effort you put into like right now if it means that you're not that you're going to win you win if you lose you lose this is per this perpetuates the like mentality that you're going to have like, doing the bare minimum so seriously the logical case is if no matter what like i do right now the outcome of this debate is final so why would you actually try hard in your world so what are the impacts on society i think most importantly like we have to realize that society delves on the idea of consequences and because of that we have to realize the good and bad so with that determinism of the like, people believing that there is no change of the, of the inevitable because of that you won't be having a good or bad without like with basis and because of that you're going to be doing things that are unavoidable and you can't do crap about it so because of that realize that that's not how the world works right we need an incentive for people to act and that's like the criminal justice system right of like the idea of, of like prisons and things like that i mean aside from that we give you in innovation and all these things because now people want to do better so why is free will better? I think free will is a lot much better because we're able to give people the redemption arc that they want. Because let's be real, people do make mistakes, they do want to have these things. And the narrative and like the narrative that we have, we're able to give people the idea that okay, even though you've had a mistake, because of the free will that you've had, you're able to redeem yourself, you're able to give yourself like do better, and you aren't just gonna go plummeting down into a hole with the term with determinism. So the criminal justice system overall will not be broken. All these other systems that rely on that, because the narrative will run on these people having control control over what they do and what they say. And with that, you have a better quality of life. So for all these reasons, I've never been proud to oppose. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Deputy Leader of Opposition. I now invite Government Whip. Hi, I'm just checking my audible. Yes, you are. Thank you so much. Give me a moment. Taking with your eyes verbally, pronounce a he him. Setting my speech in three, two, one. I think it's unfair for you to come up here and call us out for lack of engagement when the chance of analysis on why your counterfactual is bad is literally in the comparative of every single substantive that we have given you today. When in reality, they never want to engage with our two substantives on guilt and hope, the only response being that it is not. And they also don't want to engage on how their counterfactual is actually false and bad. And they just assume that their counterfactual is this um, wonderful thing that can somehow put rainbows for us in society, right? Secondly, I think it's very funny for them to come up here and shout at us for every, uh, when every single one of their response to our case is because they ignore every single one of our analysis coming from prop. Moving on, the fundamental difference between prop and all, relax them, is that the ability to try is that proposition has a world where people believe in People have to believe in an external force and will therefore be less scared to make important decisions in their life because of the safety net of a predetermined fate. But not all people have no confidence in their actions and are literally uh, are literally going to shy away from making important choices because people are now too scared to actually live their lives and make these choices on prop. We take this debate. Now, let's, let me start with Brussels, right? Okay, first speaker, let's talk about how we strip people off their free will, right? I'm going to hear this later on in my clashes, but for now, let me talk about this. The free will that exists on their side, right? You have to then realize that the free will that exists on your side is an illusion of trust. Um, okay, for example, right, very simple. It's like saying I can choose whether I want to eat a chicken sandwich or a beef sandwich, but I don't know which one I will choose because the outcome is already predetermined. Necessarily means people can still make choices because they don't know which choice is predetermined for them. In the end, they will look back on those choices and accept that it is predetermined anyways. So none of this point actually stand on their side. Moving on, second speaker. Came up again. Funny, right? How DLO comes here and tell us that there is only one benefit on prop when there is only one harm on prop, right? In so far as we disprove ops only claim that lack of free will disenchanted with life, we win this debate today. Secondly, assertion that people believe that predetermined phase 
fate is the worst one. We gave you two reasons why this is so. Never disproven. Okay, firstly, the positive um, the positivity bias of luck. Secondly, the majority of narratives of determinism that exist in status quo are religious and feature benevolent higher powers. Thirdly, on how people feel guilt on prop, right? Give us a one-liner. We have no idea how this is so whatsoever. Moving on. Four, on the criminal justice system and how it is about redemption, not punishment, right? Okay, let me just start off by saying that how, by explaining to you why the criminal justice system is not even affected in the first place, TPM came up here and already told you how criminal justice system does not bend to narratives anyways. Secondly, even if they do, even we assume they do, a crime is a crime and predetermined or not. Punishing people is the prerequisite to trying to reform them. This is irrelevant, irrelevant in the debate. Secondly, we then flip Alps' argument of criminal justice system by applying the principle that criminals are not predetermined to always be criminals. Therefore, more hope on our side and more likelihood that criminal justice system focus on the rehabilitation of prop. Anyways, you have to then realize then that the argument, all the harms that they bring up with this argument exist on their side and far worse compared to what exists on prop. Moving on, fifth. Talk about how people will not try as much because they don't believe that they have they don't believe they don't have a choice, right? Okay, you don't have you don't have, you don't have to understand that people don't believe they can do what they want. Firstly, no, I'm so sorry. When you tell us that people don't believe they can do what they want, firstly, it is an assertion. We already explained to you that people that believe that the choices they make are predetermined. First thing in PM's speech is literally people don't know what is predetermined, meaning that there's still an illusion of choice and free will because they can still choose. It's just that the thing that choose is predetermined, but they don't know which one is predetermined for them. Secondly, even if it is not, the second thing that PM said is that people can still understand cause and effect because it is basic human logic anyways. If you don't study for your exam, you will fail, meaning regardless of believing in predetermination, people are likely to try hard on both sides. Our also, it's the one where belief is predetermination. It's the tipping point that prevents people from feeling as if everything is hopeless. Moving on, clashes. Okay, the stance in today's debate very simple. On prop, we tell you determinism does more harm than good. That's more good than harm. I'm so sorry. On op, they tell you determinism impacts humanity in a bad way, right? Okay, let's look at it from op's point of view. On op, they give you two main arguments. Firstly, being the idea of free will. I don't think your idea of free will still stands up, up to the moment where I mitigated in my uh, rebuttals. But even so, when Edmund tells you that he has a driving test next week, but he has done all the preparation for that he can, but chances of the char, I'm so sorry, chances of the car breaking down mid test is still there. This means it is predetermined, right? This is what is determined in the first place. It's not that he cannot prepare for the test or anything. Secondly, on hope, right? Hope is something that is exclusive on our... On I'll talk about how hope is something that's exclusive to this. We have already dealt with this, but I'll talk about this later on in my speech. And then I'll tell you how the hope that exists on the other side is unlikely. And even so, how the comparative on prop is still a lot better. Now let's move on to Gaff, right? Okay, on our side, we tell you how firstly, how now it allows for people to not blame themselves for things that are not even within their control in the first place to begin with. Firstly, how this benefits people. Edmund gave you two analysis. Firstly, being people will be able to recover from the sadness of tragedy because now they believe that there was nothing they can do to fix this. And second point, they believe that, no, on second point, self guilt cannot exist anymore because now people believe that it is not their fault for anything that happens. Um, for example, when someone who has already studied for their test very hard tells it, won't go treat themselves for it. Moving on, the comparative is that now people on the other side of the house are going to believe when they fail their exam, they're going to believe that they are stupid and they cannot any achieve anything. Third point, then this necessarily means that they are able to recover from the trauma on our side of the house that they go through because now there's now people because now people cannot think about the things that is their fault. For example, oh, maybe I shouldn't be there at the first place. So no, they don't actively kill themselves mentally and we tell you this is important. The comparative on op is that people are going to guilt trip themselves on two points, right? Firstly, people usually blame themselves because it is the easier choice and it's a lot yeah, easier yeah. for you to see flaws in your own in yourself. Secondly, humans are more likely to believe that they can change fate for the same reason they don't believe in themselves. Second point, on how Okay, firstly, then he told you about optimum optimism bias, right? Okay, now on our side of the house, people don't know what life looks like for them, but they are willing to try. You have to accept that. Edmund really tell you how this looks like, right? Secondly, because I cannot tell you this, um, this looks like not being able to find a job within the first five years of graduating is because you are a failure and we don't want something like that to exist in status quo anyways. Secondly, but instead, it looks like when you study really hard for a test, but you still fail, it just means this time around, it's determined, but people can still work hard because they don't know what is determined for them in the first place. And up and they also don't know up to where what is predetermined for them actually applies. So they will still want to try. <clears throat> Moving on. What, um, talk about what if you fail multiple times in your life and think you are fated to fail, right? The even if is that on op, right? If Even if op wants to push this onto us, the competitive is powers on the other side of the house because now people on our side don't know what is predetermined for them and they don't know when the end is the end. So they're likely to want to try again. Whereas this cannot exist on opposition bench because now people on the other side of the house who believe that they are stupid, they cannot achieve anything. And this is something that we cannot want, we don't want to take into system. Um, in the debate today. Uh, secondly, but even if the likely to try again argument is not exclusive, right? People on op now actually believe that they are doomed to fail because things are not determined. For example, if I were to fail a test several times in my life, even if I study extremely hard for it, I'll just believe that I am nothing but stupid. Okay, so 
Insofar as the only side that can provide a benefit to society as a whole, insofar as opposition cannot defend a world where people constantly have to blame themselves for things that they cannot control, they lose this debate. Also, for anything, Op needs to learn how to have better manner. Thank you. All right, thank you, Gov Wave. I now invite opposition Wave. Okay, so hi, may I know if I'm audible? Yes, you are. Thank you very much. Okay, so, um, yeah, pronoun she, her, please do your POIs through voice. I will only be taking them after the five minute mark. If you do it before then, I will get mad. Joke. But like, okay, so starting my speech in three, two, one, I think given the fact that government fails to understand our response to their only standing case, let us clarify this once and for all. Why would you try? Why would you work your butt off if nothing happens? The narrative you believe tells you that your outcome is final. So there is absolutely no incentive for humans to want to be better in their world. Okay, so to kind of preface um yeah preface my speech first i'll be doing rebuttals to the previous speaker i'll be doing call outs um on a slightly meta scale then i will be tackling the issues that i saw in this debate and how each side responded lastly i will be doing their best case versus our worst case okay so i have a lot to say number one we'll be doing rebuttals to the previous speaker so the previous speaker tells us that oh people will have a safety net with determin determinism Safety net for what? You will have a safety net for getting something that has no basis. We also think that it's ironic that you like to highlight the safety net. What you essentially told us is that people are okay with the outcomes because they realize this outcome will happen anyway. Then they tell you that people believe their outcomes will happen regardless of the situation. So what's the result? Why try? No matter how hard your work is, the outcome is predetermined. So for example, if you work really hard again on that driving test and then you fail, what, what are you more likely to think in a world that pushes the narrative of de determinism? That you're, de you're determined to fail from the start so your hard work had absolutely no um had absolutely no bearing on what you did so this does not actually work with their what what they're trying to say that oh it's a it's a case of logic there's cause and effect but the thing is here this doesn't stand with your case because what if my cause of course like uh, i'll study hard for a test when i study hard for a test that doesn't always mean that i'm going to get a high score that doesn't always mean that i'm going to do something right so if you tell us that this logic of cause and effect is going to happen in your world then what people will believe is that the first the like the first time that they fail the first time that something bad happens they wouldn't even bother trying because they already saw that the cause of you know studying hard the, they're yeah so studying hard is their cause and then they'll see that the effect is still failing so why bother trying second the criminal justice system i'll be pick oh uh, what did i say about the fifth minute mark okay so uh next they talk about the criminal justice system so again i will be um expounding on this later as i think it's a very relevant um issue in this debate so uh right now i'll just say that if we are for determinism then people wouldn't make prisons and retribution they wouldn't give second chances to prisoners in the first place because again people will not believe that they have second chances so uh next they say that oh they still have a choice so they will still try so this directly contradicts your point on complacency if you feel complacent with the result you will also feel complacent with how much work you are putting in for the situation and then you say that people won't know what is predetermined so again the, the the problem here is that this is a narrative therefore people will think everything is predetermined my lo already frame, frame, framed this debate from your for your pm so do you know or your DPM, so please, you know, stop. And then lastly, people on the upside will believe that they are doomed to fail, they say. But again, isn't that more realistic on your side of the house? Because a single failure can determine the course of their life. On our side, we tell you that that is not always the case, that people will have the free will, that to, that um, whatever the cause is, doesn't always um, directly affect what the effect is going to be. Because again, the world is going to be uncertain. And the problem here again, is that they don't know what their fate is going to be resigned to. Next call outs, I want to talk, call out God for literally nitpicking on the def definism, uh, definition of determinism. Let's use their example on studying. They assume that bad things will lead to bad and good things will automatically lead to good, but that is only on their best case scenario. So again, look at the info slide where not always will, again, the causes lead to uh, their effects. Again, stop soft stancing on only what you want to hear. Okay, now let's move on to the issues. Beautiful. Okay, so first, uh, I'll be giving you a rundown of the issues. Number one would be re religion and determinism. Number two, the criminal justice system. Number three, society, humanity, and perceiving free 
will. And lastly, the issue of cause and effect. Okay, so for religion and determinism, government tells us that determinism will have the same positive effect that religion has because people respond well to the idea that they will be cared for at the end of the day. We tell you that this is simply wrong because they forget that there's a big difference between religion and determinism. Op tells you the fact that the problem with determinism is that there is no way to tell what your faith would be. For religion, there is a benevolent being that tells these people what their faith would look like. So whether it's heaven for Christians and Judaism, what did I say about the fifth minute mark? Whether it's heaven for Christians or and Judo- Judaism, if you're or if you know your deity promises a bountiful life or promises you are going to have a wife or whatever, you will still have an idea of what you're going to look forward to. So that's the difference between determinism and religion. In determinism, these people don't know what their like you know their end goal or their end fate actually looks like, and therefore they are of course like logically they're to believe that whatever the whatever situation that they are in at that moment is what is the best that they can be at that moment, even if that isn't always true. Next, moving on to the criminal justice system. So government tells us that the, tells us that the criminal justice system in our world will blame victims, but then the criminal justice system in their world will still punish people for their wrongdoings because the action is still bad. So they're still going to be punished. Okay, uh, let's take that. We tell you that this is an illogical application of determinism in their world. Why would people blame the victim if they had no control over their situation anyway? Is um, what we're going to run. On the other hand, why will they blame the wrongdoer if they were also fated to do that bad thing anyway? Okay, let's say that they're still punished, but doesn't this pre- present a very flawed system? As much as the victim had no choice with their situation, the wrongdoer will also be seen as people who had no choice. So then your system is very flawed because, again, it will either not blame anyone or it will punish people for what they have no control over. We also tell you that our criminal justice system or you know society in general when it comes to wrongdoings will be better because people will then be punished based on what they have done with their free will. We tell you that victims will not be blamed because competent humans will see that it was the free will of the abuser that drove them to do so. And the abuser will be properly punished because, again, they had the free will to do that. Okay, I'll take that POI. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Three, two... You say that determinism is not religion. This is not necessarily true because the narrative is based on what is popular in status quo and religion is very popular. That still doesn't... That doesn't tackle the issue. The issue is that religion is... different from determinism because religion has something that determinism doesn't and that is a benevolent deity. Next, humanity, society, and perceiving free will. Government tells us nothing on the case on how humanity and identity will actually be affected, telling us that the idea of free will is not relevant to this debate. But we keep telling you that this is very important and how society will run on this narrative because government keeps assuming that it is restricted to the mindset of like only small things such as failing an exam or throwing a glass on the wall, but not seeing how this will actually affect humans and how this will move them on into society. Again, look at how humans have reacted to taking away their free will in the world. The people who have done this are considered to be dictators who have taken away their humanity. We tell you that this will be a huge deal because free will is very important. Is a very important aspect of each person's identity and it's a very important aspect of how they will function in society. We tell you that humans will be less likely to advance innovations because there's no point in trying because whatever happened will happen whether they do nothing or anything or not. This will also result into a less empathetic and graceful society because people wouldn't uh, look at people with uh, second chances. Lastly, the issue of cause and effect. We already told you this. It's not logical to always assume that whatever that if there's a good cost there will be a good effect lastly we'll be moving on to their best case versus our worst case so at their best case they're going to have a world where somehow everything works everyone is still graceful there's still second chances and people are at peace because of the idea of determinism but we already told you with all of these issues that we've won on every single one of them because our world is not only way more logical it is also much well explained determined and mechanized with that i'm very proud to pose All right, thank you, Opposition Wave. Now, before we move on to a serious note, I would like to remind all debaters to at least to try to maintain order and decorum while debating. Please refrain from making any like statements or messages in the chats that's directly directed towards the other team. Whatever you have to say, you can say it through your speeches and you're not allowed to like make statements or put forth any messages in the chat outside of that. So that being said, I now invite Opposition Reply. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. All right, give me a second. Cool. So, starting this final speech in three, two, one. I think if you want to call us unresponsive, not listening, that we have no manners, 
or matter or whatever, and that you can give POIs regardless throughout our speech and it doesn't matter, don't assume your case is untouchable. In this debate, we have to deal with it in the context of what does this narrative imply for our society? How is it going to apply impact society, not only psychologically, but practically? How is this narrative, given that all the framing that opposition had to do for you in terms of what does a narrative imply for a society, how is this going to affect us overall? So framing, we had to be clear, what was the narrative? What are the implications? We've framed for you, the narrative is about what does society hold to be true? What government failed to showcase to you was this very fact about how narratives should imply, how narratives imply certain truths to society and how it ends up wrapping things around. This is something you only heard at opposition and you also heard the added explanation of what does it mean to have this new narrative in terms of this idea of determinism. We showcase to you that because our status quo right now is not focused on determinism, there is not that right now, we do not have that added aspect of, <coughs> sorry, we do not have that added aspect in terms of um, lacking that idea of free choice. And this kind of brings us to the main issues in the debate, which we're going to be weighing with a couple of metrics. There are two main issues in terms of free will through choice and also the justice system. Free will. Government tells you that they will have a choice and it doesn't really matter because you, because of ideas of, oh, if as long as I tip a glass over the thing, it's going to fall. That's why people are still going to have a choice. The thing is, they don't deal with it further than that. They don't showcase you why you have certain levels of initiative. Why are people going to be pushed to fight for certain things because of the response that we gave you? We told you that because of that idea that you have a set future, because of that idea that you know what is going to happen in the future, uh, uh, sorry, not that what you're going to know, but because of that idea, that whatever happens in the future is already set for you. No matter what actions you make right now, as long as you put the bare minimum, that's going to be enough. You can't change anything other than that. We told you that with this mindset, you can't get any farther. You can't get through with that aspect of initiative. You don't deal with our second layer of analysis that was brought in, but it still impacts people psychologically because they believe they have no choice in this state, which we frame to you to be a very important aspect in human nature, something they were unable to deal with and still reside on our side of the house. We also told you practically in terms of initiative as well. You lack that push, that burden that people need. You lack that hope people have because of this idea of determinism. Where there is no God, determinism is very different, as we told you, from religion. They were unable to make that nuance, so we had to do it for them, yet they failed to understand and fully make it clear. Justice system, they also, the government talks about uh, basically breaking all the fundamental values of society. Society revolves around things, uh, the idea that of people doing things because of their free will, something they don't have on their side that... Uh, House because they claim that, oh, it was going to happen anyway. That is why they don't have that big of a difference as compared to government, uh, to opposition side, because they have an incentive. Now, two more layers of analysis in terms of engagement and realism. I think opposition remains ignorant through their entire speech, but they falsely take, uh, uh, fail to take POIs through their whip and fail to respond to our case, right, case and ideas on redemption, our counterfactual and society. It doesn't give you engagement by nitpicking at our entire case, especially at opposition. We have given, been very charitable about why their case wouldn't work, even at their best case. Realism, we showed you a more realistic world and why this narrative isn't much better than government's bench. We show you this narrative actually affects society and how it will affect how much society, humanity grows in both of short and long term. We were the ones who had to characterize humans and how they were act because it wasn't done on their side. They tried to tell us that the world actually wouldn't change much and they would only receive peace, not conceding to any single one of the possible harms in our case. They only engage on their best case by not engaging on their own call outs. They don't deal or showcase to you at least how they win over our claims. Instead, they just tell us it is irrelevant, even if it is not for all those reasons. Very proud to oppose. Thank you. All right, thank you, opposition reply. I now invite government reply. Uh, hi, I'm assuming I'm audible. I'm gonna start my speech in, sorry, let me find my dogs. I'm gonna start my speech in three, two, and one. To really clear up this debate, right? We're gonna talk about the narrative and how it's been interpreted on props since it's been something that's been largely ignored throughout the rest of the bench. So I've already told you in my speech that the way this narrative will play out is that people will use this narrative to feel safer, to feel more 
to feel safer and as a narrative to like so that they wouldn't feel as guilty when something that is out of their control or something they have no idea what they're like uh they have no idea what the decision is going to be is going to happen so when they enter a situation where the outcome is unclear that is how this narrative will play out it is not just simple things like throwing glass uh it's not just like a simple thing as when you throw a glass and you know that it will break the difference is people are going to use this kind of narrative to be able to like maneuver around their life when it comes to the bigger decisions the smaller decisions obviously the things that are obvious like with cause and effect are going to leave things that are going to remain normal that are going to remain the same because of how it's human logic and how people know how things are going to turn out so it's very important following here that this narrative was never contested on opposition there is no counter there is no like um sorry there is no like counter proposal on how this narrative is going to play out so we have to use this narrative to judge the three issues then so the three issue the three issues in debate hope and the, the hope and the ability to try which is largely connected to free will and lastly on the lack of guilt the first on the hope and ability to try proposition proposition we tell you what hope looks like in which that is a hope that will that things will turn out will turn out well in spite of challenging obstacles and impossible walls to climb because humans are optimistic when it comes to the gamble of fate the opposition may say people will be too scared to try once they fail but the thing is each event is isolated and has passed there is no need to want to have a second chance because the, the next event is removed from the first anyway so we don't see why that was brought up in this debate opposition has no different definition of hope or at least we didn't catch it because we don't know how they're able to gain hope from free will when people are too scared to try in the first place which is how i'm going to go in here now in free will they talk about there's only a benefit of hope there's a lack of linkage besides like one line of analysis in which people don't want to try when everything is set in someone in the first place but we've already contested this have we not in like jordan's speech when jordan tells you people are more likely to be willing to try and make decisions because then the consequences will be backed up by the illusion of a safety net safety net of a predetermined fate the comparative then is that people are not going to want to try because they know if they make one single mistake everything is going to go down and it's going not going to be up to fate there is no kind of safety net to break to like back them up and when i tell you people are more likely to be optimistic in the first place is therefore they're going to want to try therefore the key difference between the ability to try between opposition and proposition is that even in proposition when things go turn out for the worst people are still going to try because they believe there's a safety net and because they believe at least a second event has a pre has like a predetermined fate on opposition everything is up to the capability of the person when people doubt themselves in sufficient analysis we told you throughout the speeches people are not going to want to try in the first place and that is the key difference and that is why we'll take this debate but secondly then on the lack of guilt and that is issue we've told you in like proposition why people are not going to feel guilty when they know it is no longer their fault and we tell you this is not going to affect the criminal justice system at all because the criminal justice system is not one that is wavered by narratives driven around people the criminal justice system is a system in which they punish for actions and like uh they punish people for their actions whether it was intended whether it was set in stone people still have to be punished which i've already responded sufficiently in my speech therefore when it comes to the lack of guilt we tell you we clearly win on this one because it's, com it's completely uncontested coming out from in the entire opposition bench when they're unable to the contest when people make mistakes and people are likely to blame themselves or on, so on a purely quantitative perspective then proposition wins because we have at least one exclusive benefit with no argument impacted enough from opposition to weigh it out but on a more in-depth view however because we are the only ones who are able to properly prove things for example to properly prove the ability to try being still and being exclusive to proposition then even after considering responses coming out from opposition on how people are going to be too scared to make decisions once they fail we tell you this is why we take this debate and ultimately why opposition has to take the loss. Thank you.